our prize. We get free money, we get free coins, and we can use them however we want to use. What do you get out of it? You know, the reason why I did this is I wanted to let people know that Bitcoin's more than just a currency. What I get out of it then is getting this technology out there for everybody. And then I get to, you know, fulfill my little geeky desire to create a coin and become the central banker of this particular coin world. The Ben yeah. Bernanke of all coins. <laughs> it's something like that. All right, joining us live from Los Angeles, California, is William McQuigley, Managing Director at Clearstone Venture uh, Partners, uh, one of the names associated with trying to revive, uh, to some extent, Mount Gox. William, great to have you on the program. Thanks for joining Sue and me uh, on your evening in, uh, in L.A. You know, we just told sure. the audience about how, you know, so many of these uh, activities are being shut down by the Chinese. I mean, the whole Bitcoin phenomenon is under coordinated attack by sovereign governments. I mean, there is no future for Bitcoin against that backdrop, is there? <laughs> uh, I would say there really is a great future for Bitcoin. Uh, my, uh, my belief is that we have a tremendous opportunity, at least certainly in the next year, uh, with the sorts of businesses that are getting invested in. Silicon Valley is spending a lot of money investing in a lot of Bitcoin-related businesses. And I saw the trends in the early Internet era, and they look very similar with Bitcoin and the types of companies that Bitcoin is creating. Okay, but uh, William, wh why do you want to buy Mt. Gox? I mean, haven't they proven to you that they have some uh, serious security issues, given that they lost about 500 of the 750,000 bitcoins that they owned? Yeah, obviously that's the reason Mt. Gox ultimately had to cease operations, at least in the last month or so. They misplaced, lost uh, the... Uh, best we know is that a hacker came in and stole them. Uh, you have to understand, of course, that Mt. Gox is much more than just the assets that it has. It, Mt. Gox at one point, not that long ago, was the largest Bitcoin exchange in the world, doing somewhere close to $500 million worth of Bitcoin transactions each month. And the company still has a very important role, we believe, in the continuation of Bitcoin. Uh, other exchanges have started to pop up, but Bitcoin has a tremendous amount of customers. Over 100,000 people were using it before the hacking incident occurred. What that really means is we need to ensure that there is adequate security, and there really wasn't, I, I, I would say, in the Bitcoin exchange in, in Mt. Gox. There really wasn't adequate security. Uh, part of that is because the company didn't start as a Bitcoin exchange. It started as, a, as like a trading card exchange. And the measures that we would all put in place when Bitcoin is worth $1,000, those weren't thought important when Bitcoin was trading at a penny or 10 cents. Right. Okay, William, so security aside, that's one issue, but, uh, you know, you're just going to have a tough time getting through the bankruptcy courts in Japan. You're just offering basically a token payment of just one Bitcoin, which is about $400. That's basically zero, and, uh, you know, Japanese courts have issues with this. Yeah, no, I'm very familiar with a lot of the uh, Japanese processes. Uh, just to understand, I want to put the one Bitcoin uh, term in, in, in context. That is a symbolic amount. Uh, it's, it's akin to what we do in the U.S. when we buy a business that is a negative net worth and we buy it for a dollar. Contract law requires consideration to be paid. The gesture is usually a dollar. Since it's a Bitcoin exchange, we decided to do a Bitcoin. Uh, the company, as it stands today, has a negative net worth uh, to the tune of several hundred million dollars based on the Bitcoins that it has lost. Uh, our plan, of course, is to take the exchange, fix the security issues, and rehabilitate it. And I want to make the point that Mt. Gox is not in a traditional bankruptcy liquidation process. It's in a civil rehabilitation process. The filing it made with the Tokyo court was to ensure that the mm. company could administer its creditors appropriately, but also right. to one day start over. William, you know, at the time the problems at Mt. Gox surfaced, a lot of competitors in the Bitcoin space were, I guess, silently or quietly cheering. And the thought was that this is going to separate the men from the boys and really highlight, you know, what works and what is viable and what are 
quality control problems, in other words, uh, Mt. Gox. Have those has that differentiation happened? I mean, what have they done? What have Bitcoin operators done to actually try to win credibility in a very fragmented market now? Well, the most important thing since Gox has been to assure Bitcoin holders that there are some procedures in place for the safeguarding of their assets. An exchange takes both cash, it also takes Bitcoins. So you have to ensure that those things are properly managed. And keep in mind, most companies that operate in the financial services space have these types of standard procedures. Bitcoin is a relatively new phenomenon. And the uh, price of Bitcoin went up so much that up until that point, there really wasn't a sense you needed to have a ton of security. Uh, when Bitcoin went from 10 cents to $1,000, it suddenly became a target for a lot of hackers. But the Procedures that need to be put in place are not that difficult to put in place. And the team we've assembled is, I think, very well qualified to take care of those sorts of things. I think in the future you will see big four accounting firms auditing the exchanges. I also think you will have cold storage for the bitcoins. You'll also have far better communication about what the rights responsibilities are of people who, cr who trade on these exchanges. Uh, the industry, keep in mind, is four years old. Uh, it's just beginning. And uh, we think we know what needs to be put in place to manage it, uh, to help rehabilitate right. Mt. Gox. I'm sure you've heard yes. all the naysayers out there, including Warren Buffett, who says it's not going to be around in 10 years' time. He used to be a financial director at uh, Disney, the licensing businesses. So, you know, you know how things go and how to make money. What makes you so sure that uh, Bitcoin is going to stick around for more than, I don't know, a few more years? Well, let's be clear. I mean, I can't predict the future. Uh, I can tell you I've been involved in early stage company formation and in some of the early trends that have wound up being popular phenomenons for many, many years. Uh, Bitcoin seems to me to have that kind of momentum behind it. When I go to a Bitcoin conference and I see hundreds and hundreds of people, entrepreneurs, who are set on starting a company or who have already started a company uh, in this space, I see a level of enthusiasm I haven't seen since maybe 94, 95 when the dot-com era began. That's what convinced me this was going to be a long-term trend. That the, the amount of enthusiasm you see among the Bitcoin participants and, of course, all of its progeny. You have a whole bunch of other coins, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and many, many others. Uh, what hasn't really been well, I think, expressed by the Bitcoin community are the capabilities, the blockchain, that is what Bitcoin rides over, what capabilities that brings to people who want to conduct financial transactions. We're just starting to get the word out about what those are. But those, those are a far, far better system for transmitting currencies and for conducting commerce across the world than, let's say, a PayPal or the traditional credit card network. That's what excites okay. me. Bitcoin, per se, may not be around, but what Bitcoin has created, I think, will be around for, for the foreseeable future. Okay, William, well, uh, good luck with your endeavor to uh, buy up Mount Gox. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us since Gox today. William Quigley sure. there of Clearstone Venture Capital. Now, we want to be hearing from you about Bitcoin. Lots of debate today on the uh, internet space. Uh, you can email us. You can tweet us. Our question to you is, will Bitcoin still be around? Do you think it's a viable currency? And does it go to zero or is it a hero in your view? And I've been getting a few responses. Yeah. I'm sure you have as well. Yeah. And people seem very passionate about this topic. Very divisive, but very passionate. Either that or they wouldn't touch it with a 10 million Bitcoin barge pole. <laughs> a lot of these people just don't want any part of it. Anyway.